guys, it's Crypto Llama here, and today I thought I'd bring you some information and tools which I think are pivotal to correctly managing your Splinterlands assets. The content within this video could be the key factor to larger portfolio gains, and if you intend on playing Splinterlands for the longer term, as well as enjoying the game, you should be treating it like a business, and in any business, your knowledge is directly proportional to your monetary returns. But first, if you haven't joined our community Discord channel, we do regular card giveaways that you can be a part of just by simply joining in on the conversation. So I'll leave all the details for that in the video description below. But now back to the video. So if you've seen any of my previous content, you'll know that I'm a huge fan of Peak Monsters and what Javi does over there. As a Splinterlands player, this platform allows us not only to increase our productivity, but as well enables us to maximize our profits within Splinterlands. So it's paramount that you understand the interface correctly in order to maximize your returns. So firstly, we're gonna look at the My Card section. And from here, you can enjoy a quick snapshot of your collection value, including total value, uh, your collection power, which will not only help you understand your SPS airdrop potential, but as well, your revenue from rentals and the cost of your rentals per day. We can easily adjust all these values depending on the filters chosen below here. And this offers us a unique ability to access a plethora of stats, which will not only help us manage our earnings, Earnings, but fine tune our results. Don't sleep on this filter section, guys. Make sure you're experimenting with this regularly. It truly goes above and beyond what the in-game interface offers us currently. One of the filters I like to use is to sort my leveled up cards to see if there's anything that I could potentially rent out. So depending on your deck value, you could set this value to greater than one. and then scan through all the cards you're perhaps not using to rent them out for passive income. If you yourself rent out cards regularly, uh, it would be prudent to select the for rent no button filter, and that will make sure you're emitting the cards which you're currently renting, because unfortunately we can't rent out cards that are owned by other users. Next, it's important to understand how to cycle through the different view modes available because each has its own advantage. Bolt view is my favorite here because it gives us access to one of the greatest features within Peak Monsters, and that is the compare rentals function. In this area, you'll be able to work out quickly if you're paying too much for your rentals. It will show you if there are other rentals available at a cheaper cost in a percentage form. So we can see here that there are a few cards which I'm currently paying over the market price for to rent. We can simply select these cards and enjoy the savings right away. Alternatively, it will also show if we're paying under the current market price. It's good practice to come in here frequently if you're a long-term renter to make sure you're getting the best value possible. This will in turn save you money. Also in bulk view, now more than ever with the release of Chaos Legion and having a lot of level one cards, it's important to be able to quickly combine these cards to increase the card's level. You can do this straight from here by clicking the green button next to the card level. The following screen will show you how many cards are required for each level. And if you're short, you can click on the check now and you'll automatically be redirected to the specific card where you can then purchase the remaining cards needed. Now, renting cards is also a breeze in bulk view. We can easily queue up a bunch of cards to be rented. Uh, for example, if you're maybe going on a holiday or you have a specific splinter that you aren't using and you wanna rent those cards out specifically, you can set your filters easily. Let's say I wanna rent out my entire dragon deck making sure that I'm not using delegated cards or rented cards, because we obviously can't rent out other people's cards or cards that are delegated. Then simply hit the select all button in the top of the left-hand column. Then we select the multiple card button and hit rent. This next window, you're provided with a number of great options on how to price all your cards chosen. If you have a bulk price in mind, you can configure that here and it will provide us with our daily return. You can also use the yearly return on the DEC worth of the card, or if you want to use the collection power to DEC ratio, you can do that here too. Incidentally, finding out a fair price with CP to DEC ratio is really quite simple as well. Just hit the rent tab. So we'll get out of this one. Go to rent, hit the configure CP bid button. 
So this function here helps users rent cards based purely off collection power. So rather than selecting specific cards to rent, you can just specify what you're willing to pay for the associated collection power and go from there. So basically this will help users to get that extra collection power needed to advance into the next league for the end of season rewards. These numbers will likely fluctuate depending on how close we are to the end of the season, so it might be worth monitoring. But if we look on the right hand side column here, we can see previous bids that have gone through for collection power to DEC ratio. The left hand column shows the active bids from other users. So here we can see that recently someone has paid 350 collection power to DEC which means if we go back into our proposed rentals, we could put that number in there and be sure we'd get an interested bidder. So let's do that now. So we can also get a snapshot of this at the bottom of the renting card window. There is another great function here, which if you don't particularly care about fine tuning your rental income or maximizing your profits and returns, allowing you to start making passive income straight away, you can simply click the set market lowest price And once it is loaded, it will set the bids on your rentals at 1% lower than the lowest priced synonymous card on the market. Now, the brilliant thing about this select all function is that it's not only made available to renting, we can also use it to sell our cards too. So after we've made the appropriate selections via our filter settings here, we can select the cards we want. And instead of clicking on rent, we can click sell instead. Now this feature will use the current cost per BCX here and list our cards either more than what the market cost is per BCX or less than by a percentage rate which you can adjust here. We can also use the low buy price feature and we can increase this or decrease this percentage wise depending on what you wanna get for your card. Now, if you're feeling generous and wanna get into the Christmas spirit of helping out one of your mates or perhaps you just wanna support my channel, there's another feature here which allows you to easily transfer or gift cards to other players quickly and trouble free. So it's in the same section as the other options. Here we can just press transfer or the gift button here. And then we can add in the username Crypto Llama TV, which is obviously where you want to send all your cards to. <laughs> there are another few options here which I'd like to highlight to you. Uh, so we can make all our selections on the filter window and then we can go back up to the multiple card selection screen and click others. Then we can easily delegate these cards to let's say an alt account if we need that extra bit of power or you have a friend who needs some extra power, we can do that with multiple cards as well. Now, one of the most important features and the feature that if you take anything away from this video, I hope you will use is the lock function. We can access this through the same way by clicking the multiple card option, click others, and then click the lock button. Within this day and age of decentralized currency, cybercrime is more rife than ever before. And one of the features that can help you curb this is by locking your cards. For example, if you have a core deck which you use consistently and you know you're not gonna be selling anytime soon, then there's no reason why you shouldn't be locking your deck. The only two functions that you can't perform while a card is locked is selling or transfer. You can still delegate, rent, and use the lock cards in battle without any issues. So this feature essentially just adds an extra layer of security of your assets, which just means that if a vile or malicious individual manages to get hold of your account information, they can't just transfer all of your assets away from you. This could seriously help you avoid a potential disaster down the track. So make sure you lock your assets, guys. You can choose a period to which you would like to lock these assets below here. And maybe just make a habit of doing two weeks or monthly locks on your cards after a season resets or something like that, just to secure these assets of yours. The last feature I want to talk about is the bidding of cards. I still get quite a lot of questions from people not understanding how this feature operates, which will arguably save you the most amount of money in the long term. Since this feature has been implemented, I for one have never once used the standard interface to rent cards anymore. And it's quite simple to get your head around. Just like with the CP bid feature, you can click on the card that you want to put a bid on. 
The left hand side provides us with the current bids from other users, whilst the right hand side shows us the bids that have been fulfilled for those cards. This information alone will allow you to work out fair pricing of the cards you require. From here, you can determine whether you prefer to be patient and wait for your bid to be fulfilled, or you can simply beat the highest current bid to get the card more quickly. So here I could put in 11 DEC, which is over the current bid price, and then I would hit confirm. If you have the highest bid, by the way, your bid will be fulfilled even if something cheaper becomes available on the market because you currently have that higher bid. And that's it for me for now, guys. If you enjoyed my content, please hit the like and subscribe button as that would mean the world to me. Be safe and have a blessed Christmas break with your families. But other than that, I will see you on the blockchain.